reliable information. Because we go the full time. What a shot into the net! It takes a deflection, but it goes into the net! Plus all the extras. Yeah. You know, Susie picks that. To deliver on our mandate as a leading media house, putting you at the forefront of our mission for everything you need to know. KTN News. Get the whole story. This is KTN News. Welcome back. It's now three minutes after eight and uh, it's time for us to get into your health. Every Wednesday we handle matters to do with your health. Now October happens to be Cancer Awareness Month and we are only seven days shy of November which is normally Prostate Cancer Awareness Month and that's where you have no shave November. So cancer is definitely something that we are going to be talking about now and for a long time to come given uh, the numbers that uh, we have both locally in the country and world over. And joining me to have that conversation, I have a panel here where we have Dr. Catherine Nyongesa, who's a clinical oncologist with the Texas Cancer Center. Thank mm. you for joining us. Thank you. We also have Mwangi Chege, uh, who trains on healthy living. Thank you for joining us. Mm. And last but not least, we have Zelifa Wamwangi, who is a patient. Uh, thank you for joining us all and um, yeah, just basically coming out to have this conversation. Remember, if you have any questions, you're welcome to uh, post them through our social media network and that's at KTN News or you can tweet me directly and that's at Michael G. Gitonga. You can also use the hashtag and that's KTN Morning Express. Let me start with you, Dr. Tari, Dr. Nyongesa. Yes. On the numbers on cancer because they've been varying and there seems to be uh, an increase either an increase or an increase in awareness therefore maybe reflecting bigger numbers which is it is it that we have more numbers or is it that now with awareness we seem to be uh, having more numbers now known um, all those factors contribute um, based on the recently released global con cancer statistics they re they say that in kenya we are now having um, over 47,000 new cancer cases every year, and we lose 32,000 of, of them every year. And this is being attributed to maybe uh, people living longer. So as more people reach uh, middle age, the chance of getting cancer is increasing uh, because we have um, a better lifestyle, better uh, access to health care. And the other thing is increase in population, um, that one also will have more cancer cases reported. Change in lifestyle, we are adopting more of the Western uh, lifestyle. Um, also use of alcohol, tobacco, and more awareness. People now are aware because before when one had cancer, they thought maybe it's uh, bewitched, uh, but now they know it is cancer. And then the other thing is there are more uh, health facilities where cancer can be detected early. And as you are aware, the government also uh, tried to bring cancer screening equipment even back to the counties. So in those counties where it's functional, you find patients are able even to have a scan, an x-ray, just to check if it, you have cancer. And also we have more doctors trained uh, in, in this uh, field That's and they are able to diagnose it early. Yeah, although although I, I'm aware that we have <coughs> very few oncologists in the country. How many do we have now? At the moment, we have, we, have, uh, we have about 25 in the country, um, but also the University of Nairobi is training more, so we hope to have a, an increase in the number. And also be aware that cancer is not diagnosed by the oncologist. Usually it's the doctors, the surgeons, the gynos who make the diagnosis, and then in terms of advanced treatment is now when the oncologist the is the involved. oncologist is brought on board. Yeah. All right, and I'll come to you, Zelifa Wamwangi, and maybe <coughs> just take us through your story. Um, I'm Zelifa Wajiro Wamwangi. I was diagnosed with cancer in 2008, December 1, after they removed a lump from my breast. And um, after four days, uh, they removed the breast because the 
Islam turned to be cancerous. Okay. And I uh, went through the chemo in 2009 with Dr. Gladys Carey and uh, have worked with her. I've been to ED about four times mm -hmm. and uh, I'm still feeling well. Okay. Yeah. And um, maybe walk me through the journey of first of all finding out that you had cancer and uh, what there things that made you concerned before you went to the doctor, or was this just an ordinary checkup? Um, it was an interesting story, because the lump which was there, I was there for more than five years, and my gynecologist was telling me it's okay. Mm. In year 2006, I went for the cancer check, and I was told I'm okay. 2007, I didn't go because I had... Uh, people who are seeking more attention to, and uh, fortunately or unfortunately they passed on, that was my daughter and my husband. Mm -hmm. 2008, when I went for checking at Karen Hospital, they checked, they did not see anything. But somehow, I felt I want that lamp out. Mm. And uh, the doctor who was seeing me, uh, asked me whether he could arrange, I, uh, he takes out from there. Mm -hmm. I told him no. Then I to, he told me whether he can take me to Narob West, I said no. He told me whether he can take me to Bagat Road, I said no. I said I'm going to Kenyatta. I knew I, go, I had a nephew who is a doctor there. Mm -hmm. uh, he said whether he can uh, uh, introduce me there, I said I'll find my way. When I went there, uh, this is my nephew who is a doctor, Dr. Kagema, uh, referred me to Dr. Utieno, and uh, that was in uh, November, mid-November. Uh, when I went to see him, he told me he cannot do the operation that, that time because uh, he was busy, and then he told me he's going to do it the following week. And when I went there, I went on a Thursday to Kenyatta. I was admitted on a Thursday, and on a Friday morning, I was taken to the theater, they took out the lamp, and uh, then the, uh, the following day, I went home. I was given an, an appointment of 1st December. Mm -hmm. When I went for, that, for the result, 1st December, and I, it was found out that the lamp was cancerous. Okay, and at that point, that's where now, you, you'll give us your story of why you went to India. At some point, I'll come back to you. But let me come to you, Mwangi Cheke, and there are many myths that surround cancer and diet. Although one of the things that Dr. Nyongesa has mentioned is our change in lifestyle and adopting mm -hmm. to uh, Western culture. And that, of course, I know has a lot to do with what we eat, how we live our lives as compared to how we lived our lives. Maybe your opening remarks and the importance of diet or healthy living or eating in regards to cancer. Uh, thank you, Mike. Uh, we run a, uh, an awareness campaign called the Boot Cancer Challenge. And uh, it, it was formed by uh, just the background of even government trying to push for people to, uh, to eat right, to be active, or to exercise, uh, to go for screening and to stay healthy. Mm. And, and uh, because when we talk about cancer, uh, then early detection, uh, you know, when we were young, we, everyone used to say prevention is better than cure. Correct. And it's so much about, that is so much about cancer that uh, it first starts by prevention. And uh, when we talk about prevention, then we champion for people to eat right. You know, let's do more veggies, and fruits than fast food uh, and, and, and wheat and sugar. And uh, I, I know that the, the doctor will, can talk more about that. But that's what we push for people to eat uh, healthier and then to be more active, uh, the, to do exercise and, and, to, and to stay healthy. Does that necessarily keep you away from cancer? Because so as far as I know, there's not been discovered a real cause for cancer. Uh, I I, can, I cannot say 
uh, that that is the best cure. But from where I sit and 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 the knowledge that we have uh, is that when people eat right, then. Uh, the body builds immunity, the body is able then to fight all manner of diseases, mm -hmm. cancer uh, included. And so, and so that's why we champion for people to do that. And that when, peop when, when, you, when you eat right, when you exercise, even the way you feel, not necessarily, you know, most people go to the gym to work out so that they can get a six pack, so that they can lose weight. Uh, but then we should turn that to be a lifestyle. Mm. Uh, uh, that uh, our bodies, just the same way we uh, we go out there to service our cars after 5,000, 10,000 kilometers, kilometers, then we should do that uh, as a lifestyle every day. Just a 15, 25 minutes, half an hour workout is good for your health. You know, you, you don't necessarily have to look like a model, but I can assure you, even just the way you'll feel, uh, you'll feel it's very really good different. medicine for you. Yes. All right, Dr. Nyongesa, the importance of diet in regards to cancer, but also... Um, Zelifa here is a living uh, testimony that uh, diagnosis of cancer is not a death sentence. Ten years on and she still looks very well, still looks very strong. And uh, first of all, let's start with the importance of diet. Then secondly, just to demystify that idea that cancer, the minute you're diagnosed with cancer, then that might be the end. Yeah, it, it is true that uh, cancer is not a death sentence. And the key thing is access to health care. Um, if you have unusual symptoms, go to the doctor so that they are picked early and if it's the cancer, it's found at an early stage uh -huh. and you can be treated and be cured and lead a normal life because you are a, still a normal human being, you have responsibilities. If you are a father, you continue being a father. If you are a mother, you continue being a mother and you still have to go to work. So it, it is good that you take good care of yourself and it's not like the end of life uh, when you are diagnosed with cancer. In terms of diet, um, what we know is that a um, healthy diet is also gives you a um, healthy functional body and it protects you from um, these health uh, lifestyle diseases like high blood pressure, diabetes. In fact, with obesity, you are, you are at risk of all those um, uh, lifestyle diseases and they're actually more deadly than the cancer. And usually these are like silent killers. So we are encouraged that, I mean, after some age, maybe after 40, you need to be going, even if you go for screening for cancer, just also go for screening for blood pressure, for diabetes, because those ones may just not give you symptoms at all. And if we look at the statistics in Kenya, we find that um, the number one cause of, of death is infections. Then this is followed by uh, lifestyle diseases like heart attack, high blood pressure, diabetes, then cancer comes number three. So we are still at risk of all these lifestyle diseases. And if you eat healthy, a balanced diet, uh, reduce fat in your diet, you are better off um, than um, having excess weight. And there are certain cancers which are more common with the obesity, for example, breast cancer, uh, uterus cancer, and even prostate cancer. And some others, but those are the most common ones. All right, let me come back to you, Zelifa. And you <coughs> stopped at the point where you went to Kenyatta and your nephew referred you to a doctor, but at some point you mentioned that you went to India four times. Why did you need to go to India? Um, in 2013, my doctor, Dr. Kerry, recommended that I go to India for PET scan. And uh, I went, and when I went there, I was, they said I continued the medicine I was taking. I came back. And uh, in year 2014, I went back. That was in March. When I went there, I think uh, they, they diagnosed something. And they said uh, I needed what they call cyber knife of my head. Mm -hmm. the, the, it was required that I pay $100. I thank God that uh, I telephoned my son, Edward Kagema. It was a Friday. There it was 11 o'clock. Here it was 2 o'clock. And uh, by Monday, by God's grace, he had sent half of the money. 
and by Friday he sent the whole amount. So I stayed there two weeks. They did the cyber knife, and uh, I know people here were very worried when they had I'm going to have an operation. When I'm all, I went alone, but I was not alone. We were four because I was with my God, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Because even the day I was diagnosed with it, mm. I did not panic. Mm. I thank God. Because of your faith? I, I don't know. Well, that day I did not know. <laughs> but when I looked back, mm. I looked back. When I was going through the chemo in February, it was revealed to me. Because that room where I was, when, I, when the result came out, I was the last patient. And the nurse gave me my file after I gave her the result, and she, she left. I told me, when that patient gets out, you, you go in. And as I, I learned how to read, I read my file. That's the time I, I came to know it's myself who discovered that I had the cancer. So it's not even the doctor who... It's not the doctor who told me. It is myself. You read it for yourself. I read it for myself because mm -hmm. there were a lot of things written there medically. I couldn't read. But the last sentence was cancer grade 2. Okay. And uh, the reason why you went to India, was that because we didn't have facilities in Kenya that were able to uh, diagnose and possibly... Uh, I, I don't think we have got PET scan here in Kenya. Okay. Dr. do we have... We are actually launching one um, tomorrow at the Aga Khan University Hospital, so we'll, we're going to have the first PET scan. Uh -huh. And then um, on the government side at um, Kenyatta University, the, the, uh, there's also uh, really advanced uh, stages of having a PET scan there. Uh -huh. Yeah, so, okay, so it's, it's something which has not and, been there. Uh, and of course the what that then means is <coughs> that it makes the treatment very costly. Not everybody can go to India like she managed to go. But secondly, even for that um, PET scan that's going to be launched tomorrow, by virtue of the fact that it's the only one, um, chances of it being affordable are quite low for majority. Why is cancer treatment so expensive? Okay, um, number one is that not all patients need a PET scan. Um, there are other tests that one can do to know the stage of the disease. Um, and I think the, we also need to bust the myth that a PET scan is not a treatment. So patients should not feel bad that they are not able to access a PET scan. Um, they can still get treatment without the PET without CT. The PET scan. But generally, yeah. cancer <clears throat> treatment, especially in Kenya, is very expensive. I happen to have lost both my parents to cancer. And we, with my mom, we treated her locally. With my dad, he went to India. It actually <clears throat> seemed cheaper to fly to India, have the treatment done despite accommodation and food and all that, than to have it done locally. Why is that? Okay, there's a change in that um, because there are more cancer centers coming in. And cancer treatment, um, our patients find it expensive, especially the fact that you have to really navigate. Imagine you are coming from the counties and they treat you for the wrong thing. You spend money. And then by the time now the cancer is diagnosed, you are told, okay, go to Nairobi because maybe that's where only we have the cancer facilities. So the patients really struggle a lot. Um, but of late now we have the National Hospital Insurance Fund, which, has, which is giving relief. It has a ceiling, but it has supported a lot of patients mm -hmm. because it can actually cover your chemotherapy, it can cover part of your surgery, it can cover radiation therapy. So those are actually positive things. And cancer um, oncologist um, training is also very expensive. We don't have uh, training available locally, especially in the past until now, when the University of Nairobi and um, um, Moi University are embracing the same. So when you have to send a doctor to train overseas in oncology, it takes many years and it's expensive. So there's a lot that goes in and even just um, setting up a cancer center is also expensive. Um, but once uh, our government puts in more effort to make this uh, healthcare affordable, I think, I think things are going to change. Okay. Mm. Let me come to you, Mwangi. And uh, <coughs> of course, diet here you mentioned, and Dr. Ari backed you up on that. The diet is important, and not just in the issue of cancer, but generally just for good living and healthy living. But are there foods, especially I'd like us to maybe look at myths that possibly are there regarding cancer. Are there foods that predispose you to cancer? And are there foods that are carcinogenic? 
Uh, I think that there's a lot of uh, research that is going on and, and, and people just looking at which foods are, are good at fighting cancer, uh, which foods are, are bad for, uh, for cancer, and even in health generally. Uh, I, I cannot substantiate and say this one skip off them. I remember, I remember when uh, I also lost my dad to cancer, mm -hmm. and uh, sitting with a doctor and asked, so, so which foods should my dad take and which ones should he not take? And and when he was going through treatment, uh, uh, at some point the doctor said, you know, let him let him enjoy, eat, yeah. uh, you know, what he needs to eat. Mm. Uh, other doctors will say differently, uh, but you know, just uh, from uh, from a health uh, point of view, uh, it's important to he to eat a balanced diet. Uh, you know, just back to basics, eat a health, uh, a balanced diet. Uh, try and reduce on red meats and do more white meats. Uh, try to reduce on 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 especially carbs and and wheat, especially uh, deep fried stuff, you know. And uh, and we're calling to to for people to go more towards uh, our traditional foods, you know. Uh, they are they are better for us uh, than. Than, than what the doctor mm -hmm. talked about, Western culture, where we are adopting, you know, more more fast food. Uh, the world is a fast place nowadays, and so most of us are inclined to fast food. Uh, but but then we are just uh, asking people to, uh, you know, instead of embracing fast food, can you do like your pack? Go back lunch? to the basics. Yeah, yeah, go back to the basics. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I like to advise my friends, you know, instead of uh, uh, going to fry every lunchtime, can you pack your lunch? Most of the time, the food that we have at home, how we cook our food, is normally it's healthier. Normally healthier. <laughs> yeah. so, so, so let's go back to basics. Pack your, pack your food, pack your breakfast. Uh, <laughs> we live our lives upside down, whereby most people don't have breakfast, and we have heavy, a heavy dinner. dinner. Mm -hmm. yeah, and so mm -hmm. I say, OK, if it's too late for you to have dinner, it's fine. Can you have your dinner early morning? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Have your dinner Do for breakfast. The other way around. Yeah. yeah, they say and you then, start with, by eating like a king and by evening, eat like a pauper. And that's very hard for our Kenyan <laughs> culture because yeah. uh, in the evening, that's when we want to have our, our big ugali and, and enjoy our and night. By, and, and most of the time, by the way, it's not even evening, it's night. So you'll yes. find people cooking at 8, 9 p.m. and then you have a huge lump of ugali, which you take to bed. Zalifa, yeah. you've, you, you're looking very strong and I must say that you're an encouragement. Uh, you've lived with cancer for 10 years after the diagnosis. What do you eat? I, I eat f uh, every food, but uh, I have stopped eating things like sausages or those d deep fried things mm -hmm. or fries, uh, potatoes and so on. And uh, I, I eat for breakfast, I eat guachi, domas, mm -hmm. and uh, I enjoy. You enjoy. And <laughs> yes. have, have the doctors <laughs> said anything about your diet? Have they warned you or told you what you shouldn't eat? I, yes, I'd know, but I know my doctor advised me to stop eating things like sausages, mm. which people eat for breakfast, and uh, thing, those different things. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I eat everything. Everything. And, yeah. All right. And, and let me come back to you, Mwangi, and the question of uh, foods in plastics. I was reading an article not too long ago which was talking about uh, water in plastic bottles. The longer it stays there, the more chances of it becoming carcinogenic. Is that mm -hmm. true? It, uh, it has been proven to be true. And, 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 uh, and so even like uh, if you go to some hotels today, you realize that uh, the people are pushing uh, guys to take to ca carry a certain type of bottle. Uh, when you're buying a bottle, just look and have the heavier plastic instead of carrying, the you know, when we, when we buy the light plastic bottles and, and we put in our cars for days on end, you know, and uh, the, the sun rays hit there, uh, they say then it's not good for our health. Uh, but then there are some 
uh, special bottles. Uh, mostly when, when I want to buy a water bottle, I look at the bottom and it's written seven. It means that I can, I can take a hot or cold water in there and it will be good for my health. And so, and so I champion for guys to carry your water bottle and then, and then fill your water bottle as you go. And, and, and water is good for you. Water is good for any you. day. Okay. Yeah. Dr. Ari, let's come to diagnosis and, uh, you know, identifying that you have cancer. And I know that this has been talked about many times, but I think it's never something that we can talk about enough on early diagnosis and treatment as uh, for it to avoid, you know, complications later. Just the basics of how do I begin that process of ensuring I might be feeling healthy today, but God knows what's happening in me. Yeah, so we... We are encouraged to, to, to as much as we, we are aware, um, but also you, you must practice. Um, for example, a doctor can tell you don't drink and don't smoke, and probably they're practicing it. So those are things we are saying as Kenyans. We should also be aware of the risks of whatever lifestyle we take and practice. So one should be the doctor of his or her own body. Mm. So once you notice unusual symptoms, you are being given um, ordinary medication for infections, for example, and they are not going away, uh, you are losing weight, um, you are experiencing lumps that are swelling and they are not disappearing despite treatment, or hoarseness of voice, uh, throat pain, uh, discomfort in your tummy, depending on where the, the problem is, because cancer can affect any part of the body, then you take the first initiative and tell this doctor, you've treated me and I'm not getting well. Could there be something more to it? So then you'll be screened for cancer. And in case it's diagnosed to be cancer, don't fear. Because if you fear, the cancer will keep on growing in your body and it will go to very advanced stages when it's not curable. So once um, it's confirmed, the way they confirm usually is either to take a biopsy and then the doctor will advise for more tests like a scan to know the stage. The treatment now will move on from there. Um, it may include surgery, um, chemotherapy, um, radiotherapy, plus or minus hormonal treatment depending on the diagnosis of the cancer. There are more than 200 types of cancers and cancer is just not one disease so we are not able to enumerate how you treat each one of them um, but we move to common things um, we know that in in our society breast cancer is number one so simple things you'll find a lump in your breast skin changes changes in the size of the breast so you'll go for a biopsy then surgery if it's operable chemo and radiation the second cancer is cervical cancer. So women will experience abnormal vaginal discharge, uh, heavy periods, even periods coming in between before your next period. Uh, you may have a pain on having intercourse with your partner. So that's a wake up call. If you're being treated for infections and the discharge is not going away, this pain is not go going away, have screening for cancer and it can be managed. For the men, the leading cancer is throat cancer. Um, and especially esophagus. So you find food is getting stuck in your throat, um, you are losing weight, uh, hoarseness of voice, then the doctor will stick a tube in your throat and check and take a biopsy. Then from there they recommend either surgery or chemo and radiotherapy. Then the, th the fourth cancer and maybe second leading in men is prostate. So men will come usually above 40 uh, they are peeing a lot in the night, they wake up to go to the toilet and they feel they have not voided all the urine, um, so they go back again. Uh, the urine stream will be poor, uh, so that's the time um, you get screened for prostate cancer. They can do a blood test and if the PSA is high, then you go for biopsy, then from there surgery, radiotherapy, hormonal therapy depending on the doctor's recommendation okay so there's quite a number of ways but the initial thing i think that i'll pick from there is become your own doctor mm -hmm. any change that you see anything that is persistent that needs to be investigated uh let me come to you zelifa because you're a living proof of uh cancer not being a death sentence but what have you had to change from the time now you had your surgery did you have to change the way you live 
Do, are you on medication, you know, permanently? What did you have to change in your lifestyle? Well, uh, I'm on medical treatment throughout. I'm taking medicine. Like now I'm taking two different types. And uh, one of them is very strong, Eveta. And uh, because of that, they have to add uh, something to do with bones. Mm -hmm. uh, I also take something to help my bones that they are not worn out. Mm -hmm. And uh, it also affects other things uh, in my body. And so the, um, I added some more medicines. Mm -hmm. Like uh, yesterday, I was added something to do with the with <laughs> I can't remember because something was there in my blood. Mm. It uh, they found it was not working properly. Even uh, because of that means which is very strong, the blood may go low. Okay. HB is affected, mm -hmm. and then you have to eat well. I try to eat well. I have a lot of vegetables, and also uji mm. uh, of uh, not or not of meat, but of sorghum and uh, the other one, not no, not the white one, mm. and that helps a lot. That helps a lot. Yes. And how many times do you have to see a doctor? How frequent do you have to have your clinical checks? Uh, I I I have. It depends. Sometimes it may take three months. Sometimes it may take. Uh, too much, uh, depending on when I check the cancer marker, mm -hmm. if it is showing and that is going up, mm -hmm. I, I will have a frequent visit. But when the cancer marker goes down, then I don't have to see her okay. uh, as often as that. Okay. Because they have to check the cancer marker every time. Mm -hmm. I have to see how the cancer is going okay. in my body. Uh, we'll, need, we'll, we'll need to conclude. Let, let me start with you, Dr. Tari, on your closing <coughs> remarks, but also your advice generally to the public out there in regards to cancer. There's a lot of uh, myths that surround it. There are those, like you've said now, at least there's more information. People do not uh, think they're bewitched, but there are those who still think uh, that it may be witch. But more specifically, especially now that we're getting to November, Men normally tend to leave things until, you know, there's a lot of pain or you cannot bear it anymore to go see a doctor. The importance of just having regular checkups. Um, it's very important that you have regular checkup. And whenever you go to the doctor, it's an opportunity. They'll screen you for cancer and other diseases. They check you for infection, check your blood pressure, and maybe even check your heart. Um, when we go out for screening, we find that 70% um, of the turnout is women, and men is only 30%. But now we are encouraging them that um, they need to go out um, for, for checkup. And if you are too busy, but you notice unusual symptoms, even just simple things that you may brush off, like infection, mm. you need to be attended to. And also, Generally, all of us, we advise not to, to trivialize some symptoms. Because you may have a headache, you say, ah, it's not, I have a headache, but it's not bothering me. So Don't trivialize pass. persistent mm. symptoms. And then early diagnosis actually improves cure, and people can lead a normal life. And as we move to November, we're actually holding a cancer conference uh, by the Kenya Society of Hematology and Oncology, will bring together cancer survivors, the doctors, the students, because we, as Kenya we need to move to research, find what is ailing our country. We need to share survivor stories like Zelifa, she's telling us her story. You know she needs to encourage the others because there's life after cancer. And then after that, we'll have a, a cancer concert still um, uh, by Texas Cancer Center to try and create more awareness. Mm. And cancer victors are welcome so that they share their experiences. And when somebody listens to Zelfa, they'll know that cancer is not a death sentence. Absolutely. Mm. All right, check out your closing remarks and maybe just words <coughs> of advice in regards to diet. Uh, when it comes to our health, uh, it's paramount because then, then uh, our, our bodies are what we need to, to move every day. And so we, uh, I would want to call on people to, to be careful on what they eat, eat healthy, eat a balanced diet, 
uh, drink your water regularly. Uh, just take care, take care of your body, exercise, because one of the other things about cancer is stress. And one of the e easiest stress relievers that people don't realize is uh, working out. Uh, every time you, every time, every time you uh, exercise, then you release uh, uh, endorphins, which helps you. It's it's called the happy hormone. It's a uh, it's a happy uh, it's a happy hormone that then reduces your stress levels, mm. which is important in 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 even fi Healthy. fighting not only cancer but all manner of diseases. Mm. Okay, and uh, and uh, uh, then I would I would also just want to reiterate what the doctor has said. Then let's let's go for checkups. Let's uh, make sure that uh, we don't go to the hospital only when we cannot move when we need an ambulance, but go there just the way you, like I said earlier, the way we take our cars for service, do that regularly. Okay. I actually like to tell my friends, make it like your birthday gift. Mm -hmm. On your birthday, go for your for your check for your checkup. You just never know. Mm -hmm. You'll be saving yourself. And then lastly, uh, it's, uh, when it comes to health and, and fitness, it's easier to do it as a team. Team up with your spouse, team up with the, as a family, team up with your colleagues in the office. Then you will realize that as you do it together, it becomes easier, it becomes fun, and that's what we encourage uh, people. That's why we, uh, in October, actually, uh, 6th of October, we had our boot cancer challenge where we called people to just come, let's talk about cancer in a fun environment. We had a five kilometer obstacle race uh, where we talked on fitness, we talked about health. And, and, and also matters early detection yeah. uh, of cancer. We right. teamed up with hospitals to do the same, to do checkups, and uh, we believe that as we do it as a team, then uh, cancer will fall. All right. Zalefa, your closing remarks, and maybe just to encourage people out there. I would encourage people that uh, when you are diagnosed with cancer, it's not a death sentence. Mm -hmm. It's a disease like any other disease. And uh, we, when you are sick, just see the doctor. I know have been uh, helping people. They have been consulting me and coming me and counseling people. And some have looked after them in my own house. 